everyone. Welcome to Carolyn Talks. This is the podcast slash YouTube channel where I, your host, Carolyn Heinz, film critic and journalist, talk to film creators around the world about their work, the industry, and what inspires them. And today, I am joined by actress Bailing, who I have to say must geek out a bit because I've been a fan for a while. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be able to talk Thank to her so about much. this film, Back Home, by um, by first-time feature director, Nate Key. And this film is a thriller, it's a horror, it's a family drama and I think it's also a cautionary tale about the relationships between parents and their children, mental health, possibly a warning about cults, stay away from the creepy kids. And there's so much about this film that we can't get into. So I can't wait to talk about that. So thank you so much for joining me. Bye. Thank you so much. Nice talking with you and your fans. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, so this film, um, Back Home, I first have to ask, how did you become involved in this project? Because it's, um, it's I think it's, probably one of the most unique horror films I've seen in a while in that you really can't, it's one of those films where you really can't tell what is real and what isn't. So what drew you to this, um, to this character of the character of Hong, um, Hong Wei Lan, who's the mother of the main character Wing, and what made you decide to work with Nate on this, on this film? Well, I think in life, there's always fate. You know, people meet is already pre-decided or somebody choosing me. Uh, I, I think uh, how get, I got involved because I won an um, Asian Academy Award for my acting in Dumplings. It's a really, mm-hmm. really popular film there in Hong Kong, in Asia. So I won all this award. I think the producer saw me in a Golden Horse Award, which mm-hmm. I was presenting for Best Director. I didn't know. Later on, she told me she was next to me. Then she hired me and she just, uh, which I'm trying to find a way, find me, offer me this role. Uh, of course, it's a first time director, but I think the producer did a lot of casting. Of course, the director has to approve. So I have no clue about this film, but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to know anything. Like I jump in, just I'm, I'm seeing like dressing almost like this, jump there. There's no time for me to rest or mm. do it. Research, just jump into the role, play the local Hong Kong woman. I don't know how did I do it. I'm just like a Hollywood girl, right? I think it's like internally, there's a universe to me. You yeah. just open it. They just step inside to guide me to do that. And to me, I like mystery. I think this film, although what you talked about, but to me, it's romance. I mm. think she has an internal romance with this character to other characters because she's living alone. They're in the places with, with her child but you don't know what's her surrounding like it's a mystery you don't know where she lived what she went through and although you're lucky i haven't seen the film so a lot of them oh, really yeah yeah but i don't know what's in it eventually so mm-hmm. i talked to the director he's very good very observing um in his mind he has a style but i'm a woman so i keep encouraging them you have to add something sexy add something uh, of the element of female character. So he did, we shot it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it on screen. I think because my previous work got me this job. Hmm. Okay. So it's, um, it's like you said, fate, and the film kind of does talk about that because it talks about, um, can we run away from our destiny? You know, cause the character wing, he's kind of like running from what will be seen as his destiny you know he's running from his ability to see goals and like it's like is it fate that he gets that he ends up going back home you know so i kind of see what you said about fate so it's kind of interesting it's always interests me where things that happen in our lives like years ago ties into the things that we're doing now so like you said you like you ran you you met the producer by 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 pure coincidence years ago and now like you're here doing this project so but I, you said something else that was very interesting to me about the film, where it's about romance. And I would have, before you meant you said it, I would have never thought about romance being an aspect of the film. But I, I was thinking, you know what? It kind of does make sense because there's an aspect of your character, um, Wei Lan, where she, like, um, Wing sees her dress as a Peking opera um, singer, you know? And those, those, um, those operas have a very romantic element because a lot of them are about fated love, a lot of them about destiny. Oh, so another... Another element of, of people perform, pretending mm-hmm. and imagine or wanting to be something else. I think as a performer, if there's no romance in your heart, then there's no poetry, no music, no space. I think that's very important for filmmaker and especially for actress, you know, because we're carrying the sensuality in the whole film. Yeah, because the yeah, because the Wayland, there's moments where she's um where she's dressed very um conservatively you know especially when, as the at, at the beginning of the film she's dressed very conservative she's she's a mother who's 
tired, exhausted. You know, she's a single mother. So she has this, some would say a dowdy look about her. And there's another female character that's the same way. But then there's moments where you play upon the sensuality of this character. You play upon like the sensuality of this woman who may have lost her um her that side of herself you know as because she like the, the father left them so she she left her reason for dressing up sexually you know but like she's rediscovering that but the interesting thing about that that romantic side of her that sensual side of her that more feminine side of her is presents a horrific aspect for her son so i think it's interesting where like um nate has it where like she while she may you're, you're thinking is she completely insane like has she lost her mind but even in this moment like the way you play her she's very self-possessed in this moment so, you know like she carries herself very assertively but the son looking on he's terrified of that aspect of her you know like that uh, that part of her represents like horror so talk about playing up this character and like having that dichotomy of the character like her sexiness being seen as a horror by the son and like how Nate, how you and Nate worked with like yeah. building up that part of the character that's a good question. It's very hard to play because I did not speak Cantonese. I learned and memorized every day and so hard because I have to convince the audience that I, I do live there. So mm -hmm. in the end, they said my Cantonese sounds like I lived there many, many, many years. So I worked very hard for other sense for the kid, how I scared him. I think in your soul, basically, you're isolated from human. You don't really feel anything. You're just in you. You enjoy that magic of being in that moment. Right. So how I feel, I feel on set, I was just flirting, playing, because I know I'm, I'm not going to really scare him, or mm -hmm. I did not know, I just having fun in that mood of a magical kind of ghosty and otherworldly, like just to scare him, to shouting at him, to allure him, to sing to him, to play with him. I think it's an element of uh, um, extended from the character. Normally mother nice to the son, right? That's the normal element. But in mm -hmm. essence, she's just caring, she's loving, but also other elements, she jump out of the mother role, become a woman woman become them this ghostly magical and with that child this is always a mischievous like for me biling i always think i have eight little spirit jumping around you know i'm mm. everything, everyone i could be um very fashionable very sexy very conservative very shy and very loud depends on what i'm playing but in real life i'm like a peacemaker so i indulge in myself do all kinds of things. But when I play a character, they just jump in and serve me. I think we all have element that's serving us. Like all this element, how I did in the first scene we did is 22 um, sentences of Cantonese. First they were shooting was the Peking opera. I said, are you crazy? I said, I don't even speak the language. And I just jumped in. I was so hot. I ended up in the hospital because so tight to the hairpiece. They have a hundred of real pink painted in. It was painful in the morning. And I never sweat. My, my shirt is all wet. You can imagine. In the hot condition, there's no air condition. It was suffering. But I have to do the language. I don't know. P perform that whole scene. Basically, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so hard. But somehow it's a satisfaction that to challenge the limitation that I don't even know I have. And that's the fun. So every moment I'm doing a movie, so I'm living the moment of challenging. I'm meeting the best of me, what I can give to serve the purity at that time of truth, of emotions as an actress. So mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. So whatever you see, you analyze, you understand from different audience have different feelings, you know, but I give you as broad, as much layers, subtleties I can just to show what can be done. So I'm, I'm a brave uh, performer. I take chances. I don't go just normal. Yeah. I want to break out something to show you human. What is humans? Many layers. That's interesting, especially as a female, you know, mm -hmm. so that's something the film gave me opportunity to do that. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah, the, the character is a very layered character. Like there's moments where like watching, I'm like, I uh, totally understand her as like a single mother just struggling with this child. And like she he's he sees goals. So like she's worried about how other people is gonna perceive him and she's worried about how she's seeing her son. Like is she is she afraid of her own son? You know, is is she afraid of the disability that he has? But then she also has to protect him, you know, when the kids are bullying him, she has to step in. But then the scene that I'm going to talk about that peaking opera scene because that one was really interesting to me. But the scene that one of the scenes that really sticks out to me with your performance is like the scene where the kids are bullying him and she chases them. And while she's chasing them, um, like this is like young wing. He's in the background and like he's like 
you don't know is he embarrassed is he afraid of his own mom and yeah. like wondering what she's gonna do but there's a thing that you do in the moment like he turns and he leaves and you look back and you're like oh wait and then you run after him and it's like and like i had this thought like does she forget about him does she just get caught up so much in in, in trying to protect her son she forgot to basically literally look out for him like she didn't realize that he had left so like that moment that you do like you like I think this this is such a fantastic thing this film because you have to go through so many emotions very quickly you switch emotions very quickly but that to me that scene was very nuanced because like there's the rage and the anger at these kids but then there's also like this absent-mindedness that you are portraying at the same time where you're like wait I completely forgot about this about my son so talk about that scene in particular because it's interesting that while she's running behind the kids like she's running downhill and I kind of saw that as like her emotions like she's like losing her stuff in the moment so like going down like she's going down 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 literally and figuratively and to find it she has to go back uphill so like it's like an up and down thing so talk about that scene in particular well i think right now you're describing i say that hallway the hall is like a journey it's like a turn mm -hmm. you know it's sort of like there's energy luring yeah luring me, you know, I, I'm luring the kid. I'm on my journey, but I'm not really aware I'm going. It's like I'm almost like the other worldly power take me. So mm -hmm. I'm the one I'm luring, then turn back. I become some other spirit. It's sort of like almost like I'm not in myself. I'm jumping out of it. So my yeah. soul is sort of like watching me, but I'm on this body. I think it's um, yeah, it is hard performing because a lot of uh, emotional things in this anger, soft, and, and sadness, and joy, and mix it together. I think uh, all of this, actually, what you're asking me, I don't have definition answer, because they're all blended like symphony, one note to another. You know, they're just blended in naturally, and how processed. If I clearly make a decision, probably you see it. So now it's just like a melody goes, like behind you, this ocean. You know, where yeah, you just go. <laughs> yeah, whatever the big force come, they will like scare you. The soft one is gently alluring you. I think it's all spontaneous at that, at that time, how I feel because my soul, my heart is open. So naturally, those magic come in to lead me. So I actually, I was not existing. I was not literally thinking. Mm. It's taken by my instinct. That right. also take it take a to, I want to share something properly for your fans, all of that. I think in life, in acting, um, you should not think too much. You should not mm. learn too much. You should trust yourself because everything within, you have this channel. But every time for me, I give myself a great quote I want to share with you. I always give cookies in my social media. I am buying Instagram. This one I always give to me. I say, if I'm thinking, I'm an idiot. If I'm not thinking, I'm a genius. Ah. So when you're thinking, you're a genius. They all say, so how did you do it? How did you do it? I say, because I do not have a question. Therefore, I do not need an answer. That means I know. We know. You know, when I know, you have this confidence and trust. And the magic will come. The element, you know, the universe, spiritual world, play a role in our lives. If we connect to the universe, actually, our world, our beings are so much more powerful than what we can know as human. So that's what something I'm I'm secretly exploring when every time I do a role. They say, Biden, you ready? I say, yeah, I'm ready. I have no clue what I'm going to do. <laughs> Show us. I say, turn the camera on. I'm just that confident. But I'm in the Zoom. I know what I I know what I know that I don't know that I know. You know, mm. it's complicated. It's something we have to let it go. We have to trust our beings are connected to the universe. Yeah. And all, all this ghosty story, all this, my character, I'm glad to find me to, to do this transitions of all these uh, complicated emotions. It's all come from how I trust myself. You yeah, know, you element as me, as Bai Ling. I, I show you a little Bai Ling means in Chinese, means white, Bai is white. It's mm -hmm. a simple character in Asian, in Chinese land, uh, characters. Lin, in a, a complication we're writing, is the most complicated character. Mm -hmm. So the soul world, the spirit world, is so complicated. That's part of me connected. But by means simple, like a child, innocence, curious. So I have these two elements in me. So if I combine them, it's a powerful, powerful tool. As a child, you're curious, innocent, and yeah. you're, you're engaging, you're truthful. But the world of universe is so complicated. They'll give you that element that we don't even understand. Mm -hmm. So some of them, uh, I don't literally didn't go through my head. It just I just went for it. 
Yeah, no, I understand what you mean because it's about instinct, you know, following your gut and trusting that you you that you have the ability to do what's um required of you, especially as an actress. Like you, you have to trust yourself as an actress to say, I know I can do this role, you know, I know I can play this character, I know I can do what needs to be done to convey the emotions of this character. And like before we mentioned um the peaking scene, and like what you're saying actually ties in a lot to this particular scene. Cause like to me, this is the most intense scene in the film, and it happens in the third act. And this is one where you definitely have to trust yourself, I think, as an actress, because you have to know how far to push this <laughs> scene. Bombs. I want to see the <laughs> Yeah, because you have to know you know what have to know how far to push yourself as an actress and how far to take your character without going too far, you know. And that's an instinctual thing. Cause if you're in the moment, you're just like, and I think this scene, I'm not sure the editing for this scene is so well done because it plays like very seamlessly. The editor did a fantastic job of the scene because it's very seamlessly, but your transition and these emotions like one woman you're raging and like you're, wow. you're in um you're in grief and in regret for the way that um what that um land treated wing you know she's like i'm so sorry i didn't believe you i'm so sorry i didn't trust you and you know i'm, I'm so sorry that i betrayed you she's like feeling all of this regret and these negative emotions about her son but then it switches to like i'm angry i'm angry that you're my son you did this to me and she's like why can't you be a normal son but i in that moment i was also thinking because the way you were like in other scenes from the film, I kind of think that she was also very angry at herself, you know, angry. Yes. At, like, why couldn't she be, quote unquote, a normal mom, you know, because clearly she was suffering with mental health issues, but she didn't have a support. So she has all of this, all of this, every emotion she's feeling is underlined by, I think, anger and regret at herself. Mm -hmm. So you play this scene so beautifully because it's just like she's broken. This woman is so broken. Yes, and broken. You're, you're like, she's abusive to her son, but in that moment, you're just like feeling complete sympathy for you her. You understand her, right? Yeah, I, I understand her because it's just like, she's like, she doesn't know what to do. She had no one to help her, you know? And so she just, this, she, she's very childlike in a sense. And like, she's also very complicated as a character. She has all of these, like, cause even, um, wing at that moment well he's very terrified. He's getting to see a side of his mother that he didn't get to see, you know, he only knew her as first a very loving mother but then the abusive mother but he's getting to see how the inside of her mind and you give us a, a you give us a look into who she was internally like her mental struggles and her emotional struggles so i think for you especially as an actress like you really got to trust your instincts and say you know what i don't i yes. this this is about anger and emotion but i don't want to make it comical because those kind of scenes can become comical very quickly if an actor doesn't know how to just like toe the line. So I think yeah. you did a terrific, um, a terrific job with that particular oh, scene. Thank you. thank you. I can't wait to see it. I'm excited. I, I see it because I was just like, ooh, this film. And like, I, I think I love films like this because it makes me really think, you know, and like really think, think about I not think only about the characters, but about yeah. everyone surrounding it's, them. It's, and the uh, it's about the modern woman I played in the Hong Kong woman, but in general, a lot of women are broken because we have society tell us what to be, what mm -hmm. to do as a mother, as a woman, you know, what you can dress, what you can behave. But we, we are so much more than that. We have so much hunger or wanting more than just a mother or woman. So I think in, in, on the other hand, we show the frustration of this woman. We show the frustration how under hopelessness uh, mm -hmm. have found there under the circumstances she wants to dream, she wants to do something, but she cannot. I think mm -hmm. that's something broken her. Therefore, she's kind of like, a, you know, it's complicated, emotionally uh, depressed. And also it's like there's just a lot of sadness there. Yeah, I remember I play. I don't know if in the scene, I was to measure the the kids' uh, clothing. Yeah, I was crying. I was crying literally myself. I said, "This little boy, you know, it's like he doesn't understand me." But this, is what I want for him, I really have love. But there's a gap. No matter how close your son, your mother, there's always something. If I love more, he'll hate me more. He thinks mm -hmm. too much. You know, there's a lot of things that you cannot talk through, almost like a glass wall in front of you. I think in this film, a lot of them are displayed or something behind the characters, behind after the veil of who they look like or what they think. And like the scene you described and, and opened their heart, their inner soul, the parts of their soul. Yeah, I think it's, oh, yeah. I want, I want people to see it. Yeah, no, I really do. Because I think while the film has this heart aspect of these ghosts in it, I think uh, to me, I kind of read the ghosts as, um, there's they to me they symbolize a lot of things but in the um, aspect of the mother son relationship I think the ghosts represent um, the things left unsaid 
you know, like things that she didn't discuss with her son, you know, like the, in like the scene that we're talking about with the pe- peeking up scene where one of the things she says is like your father left, you know, and I'm left here alone to raise you and I don't know how to raise a child on my own, like nothing prepared for raising a child. And in that moment, you get the sense that she's never talked about his father to him. You know, yeah. she had like she he, she obviously had no connections to his father's family because there's no grandparent from either side to help her look after this boy. And like the father clearly has never looked back. So in that moment, you get the sense that there's so like to me, some of the ghosts are the things that are left unsaid. you know, the things that she never talked to him about and the things that he never talked to her about because he's a child and he doesn't know how to express himself. But she's an adult, but she still doesn't know how to handle her own issues you know she doesn't know how to talk to her son about the things that she's struggling with you know so like there are these things I think for all of us many of us we all have goals you know the things that we go through the traumas that we go through the things we wish we had told people in the moment but now the opportunity is gone you know and those, those regrets you know re- you know to say regret haunts you so I think this film kind of like touches on that too Great. So uh, I'm glad that I think you are very sensitive and deep person feel all of mm-hmm. that. I appreciate, especially as an actress, you know, uh, uh, how you feel what I um, explained or, or performed. I really pretty grateful for that. So hopefully we'll touch more audience. Hope all of your fans, my fans go to see the film. I'm here for all of you. Without you, we're not here. No, like, honestly, I, honestly, I, without us, you're not there. But I think also like with you can't have fans unless we have like the films and the stories to watch. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, I, I think we have to wrap up soon, right? So yes, yes, I yes. think for our mm-hmm. last question, one of the things I want to ask you is we talked about destiny and fate and, you know, and instincts and things, but for, for, I, for every project, you, you learn something new about yourself, right? As a performer, because you like maybe perhaps touch into something as a performer that you didn't touch into before with each character. What did you learn about yourself? at the end of this project? Like perhaps you had a new revelation. You're like, you know, what? I've thought about this about myself. Oh, that's a good question. I think I learned, what I learned from this experience of performing this part in uh, Return Home, Back Home, is to be more of trusting myself, more mm. great, and never doubt myself. And always, but well, always have a heart open, always have a love, have a question, have a know in your head when you perform. Just trust your instinct. I think we're genius, we're powerful, uh, God made creatures that have every possibility things that you need. Yeah. So trust yourself. I learned to trust myself more. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for talking with me, by <laughs> This is great. You ha- I love like your insight and everything. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.